All right. How's it going, everyone? Uh, my name is Mukaili Johnson, and right now I'm with my good friend and mentor, Nicholas Corvesi. Uh, Nick, how's it going? Pretty good, man. How are you? It's good. Uh, so uh, me and Nick, we've been working together uh, for quite some time, and we usually just catch up just to talk about some concepts, entrepreneurship-wise and everything. And uh, he's really helped me a lot in my journey as far as getting results and really just learning like the whole digital marketing field. So I figured uh, it'd be cool if we like did a video and I just asked him a couple questions about really uh, service delivery because it's uh, I feel like it's a topic no one really goes over. Like everybody talks about sales and marketing, but like just delivering the service, whether if it's like for the first time or like over and over again, it's definitely an interesting topic in my opinion. And uh, it's something you definitely want to dive into. So totally. are you ready, Nick? Yeah, totally. Let's get right into it. Okay, so I have the questions like written down, so I'll be looking to the side. So my first question is, how did you get started? And like for a brief moment, like what do you do? Who do you work with? Okay, yeah. So I started kind of like my entrepreneurship journey. I'd say like a year and a half, two years ago, probably more closer to two years. And I started with like drop shipping, Shopify, and all that crap. And uh, it really didn't get me anywhere, but through some connections that I made online. One thing led to another, and then I got into that whole social media marketing thing, even though I've kind of grown apart from straight up social media marketing. Um, right now, I service pretty much non-invasive health and wellness health and wellness clinics, mainly like cryotherapy, cryo skin. Um, I've worked with a ton of different niches, but this is who I'm focusing on right now, and that's my primary focus. And I so pretty you much found, you found a group of people you like working with. Yeah, no, I, I've worked with shoot dentists, chiropractors, pretty much a lot of like the main niches, like under the sun, lawyers, real estate, but I don't, I didn't really connect with them. I like going to the gym and I'm a health minded person. So cryotherapy, I liked, it was also something different. Um, I saw that there could be massive benefit for other people, whether it was fat loss or whatever it was. And most of the owners in the niche, they a lot of them were very business minded because they had to take really big risks in order to open their own business. And I understand how that is just as well. So we kind of got along and it was, it was a good time. Awesome. So you're, you're working strictly with power therapy uh, owners right now. Pretty much. Yeah. I, I do have some old clients that are a chiropractor or a dentist here and there, but those are just because the connections have stayed. But as of right now, if I'm having a meeting with anyone or, I'm onboarding a new client. It's it's only cryotherapy for the most part. Um, and I'm pretty much just helping them just increase the profit in their business. Awesome. So kind of let's just jump straight into it. So be it either for like cryotherapy or any like client, what was going through your head the first time you were really doing like your service? Really? Like you went through everything, you sent out your messages, you did the sales call. And now like you have to like deliver the work like what what was going through your mind oh uh, shoot so i'll i'll kind of go back to like my very very first client because i think this will give a kind of good representation of all this so the very first client i had was a dentist and how i got them was i walked in to their office and uh literally i was talking to the receptionist said oh yeah i can help you guys with these things and the dentist i didn't know this but the dentist the owner was right behind her and he comes in, he like butts in pretty much says, no, 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 we have someone doing this for me. And, you know, I don't know how the hell I even like managed to like build up the will to say this back to him. Like I, I barely knew anything back then. I didn't know anything. And I literally was like, well, you know, some people are probably doing it wrong and aren't getting good results. Like, can I just talk to you sometime? And uh, he was like, all right, sure. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shoot. And once I talked to him, I figured out that he was not happy with who he was working with. They weren't delivering him any results. It really sucked. He was in a bad situation. And it's just crazy to show you that a lot of people, and what I've learned now in hindsight is a lot of people are getting screwed, but they've had a bad experience and they don't want to have that bad experience again. But so once I talked to him, it was like two in-person meetings later. Um, like that time he said, oh yeah, sure. Come by Wednesday at this time. I had to skip school. I was in high school at that time. So I had to skip school to go to this appointment and, you know, two meetings, in-person meetings after that. He, he put together a little like contract for me or whatever. He was paying me like a measly, like a thousand, not measly. It's still pretty good. A thousand bucks a month, but half of it was like to ad spend. Half of it was to me. 
yeah, it definitely wasn't bad at all. I, honestly, I don't know how the hell I did it. Um, <laughs> I literally didn't know anything. And so the crazy part at that, at that time I had a mentor and he was, he was one-on-one -on -one to a degree. Um, but I had never really done what I was doing there ever before. And so the first time I had to deliver the services, I got access to all the stuff I needed. And back then I was very strictly, like if someone asked me what I did, I'd say, Oh, I do Facebook ads for dentists. So that's how, <laughs> that's how broad I was. That's how bad it was. It was really bad. And so you still see that you still see a lot of that. So. Oh yeah. No, it's it's bad. So <laughs> literally that's my only focus was Facebook ads back then. And so I remember I remember like my little setup I had. It was in the same room, but like I had a bigger desk and it was kind of like rinky dink put together. And uh I had a bigger like TV. It wasn't even a specific monitor. It was just a TV pretty much like hooked up my laptop to and I was sitting there and I was like texting my mentor. I was like, Hey, can you like talk to me? I'm about to set up this first ad campaign. I don't even know how to do it. And he maybe sent me a video or two about it, or I just knew about it through YouTube, like watching YouTube. And he didn't respond after, and like, I was waiting like an hour and a half stalling. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to have to put this in my own hands. I'm, I'm just going to have to do it. And so I watch, I watch a random YouTube video online about how to set up a Facebook ads campaign. And he, he gave me like funnels and, and stuff like that. And I understood how it worked. I had a deeper understanding of just a YouTube video. I invested a lot of money into this mentor. But after that, I, I literally, it was probably like eight o'clock at night. I kept going until like one or two in the morning until I figured out how the hell to put it all together. And I finally hit submit on the campaign. And I was like so happy. I was like, holy hell, I finally did it. And I wake up the next morning. And I think I did like two campaigns in there. I wake up the next morning and one of them gets disapproved. And I was like completely like, shocked i was like what the freak like i did all this work and one of them gets disapproved anyway i i figured it out my mentor ended up eventually talking to me i ended up putting it together and then like most people do i'm sitting staring at the screen staring at my phone waiting for a first lead or first click or something to happen and um, eventually it happened and um you know i i had a lot to learn at that point that the lead is just the beginning the lead is the easy part there's so much more and so that's kind of the first, that's kind of the first time I like actually put together like my service and a lot more stemmed from that. There was a lot more that I learned from that client that I'm really grateful for, even though we pretty much ended up stopped working together. We didn't burn any bridges. It wasn't bad in any way. We just kind of parted ways. And that's pretty much how my first setting up my service went. That answers that question. No, yeah, totally. And I think like the theme, like in that answer was like, you really just went for it, like, especially when like you went to the place and like that guy, you just like, <laughs> I mean, you told him like straight up, some people are doing it wrong. And then it I, turns out people are doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, gosh, I, I had no idea what I was saying. Like he, I didn't even know it was, I was like completely, I wasn't prepared for this at all. I literally showed up talking to the, to the receptionist and he's behind obviously overhearing all of this. And he asked me, oh, you know, we already got someone doing this. Like completely shut me down. And it, I would assume, and I'm sure most people would probably leave. I don't know if I, I'm special in any way. I don't, I don't really think I am. Um, I would think that I would at least try to say something. But, yeah. you know, it was crazy. It was really weird. Oh, yeah, no, it was definitely disheartening that I've had those moments. But, I mean, whether if it was like just waiting, just going and then talking to him or like you had to run like your first campaign, like you just, you crossed that line and you did it. Yeah, and you know, like your processes are way better than they were before. So yeah. I guess kind of segue into my next question. I think it's a good segue. What mistakes did you really learn from that, and like what success did you learn from that? And if it's if since it's your first one, it may be difficult. If it's like more clients, like what mistakes did you say that you learned from? Yeah, so there's a lot, and I'll kind of probably like cover almost all the mistakes that I've been learning from that point. And so the first one was that I was overthinking way too much. Um, and everyone has this problem. I think at some point I still have this problem like today. I not as much as I did, but I would overthink way too much about everything. And I would think certain things mattered when they didn't. So very specific examples um, that I think a lot of people could take value from this is leads like people, like whether it's Facebook ads, Google ads, whatever, I thought leads were important. I thought, shoot, if I can get a lead at a low cost, at a low price, I'm going to be winning. They're going to be so happy. It's going to be awesome. But I figured out first for that first client that, you know, leads don't matter. They got to follow up with them next. Like that, that's the next part. They got to follow up with them and then they got to actually get them in. And for the longest time, 
gosh, I struggled to get, turn a lead into a person that walked into the door. And I, I was almost treating leads as not like people and it, it's in, in a weird way. I was just, Oh, it was a lead. And then how, like I, I had that big, I had a big barrier of how the hell do I get a lead to be a physical person walking into the door, giving their card and paying. That was the next point. And so with that client, you know, it was a big struggle. Eventually I figured out that I needed to train the front desk staff to follow up with these leads. And I had a system for them. They didn't like me. The front desk hated me. They were like, I don't want to do this. I'm already so busy with who knows what else. In reality, they weren't, they were just very stubborn. Um, that fell apart. Then I guess the next big experience I had, I closed a really, one of my first really big clients, it was a chiropractor. Um, I closed them for $2,000 and it was the easiest gimme close ever. I, my dad went to him and my dad referred me to him pretty much. He wanted to talk. I talked to him on the phone for like 15 minutes. Um, we met up at a coffee shop and literally that exact same day, I closed him for $2,000. He played the, he paid the invoice like on the way when I was driving home and it was, it was really surreal. It was really weird. So, and now looking back on it, another thing I learned is, um, make, you should only close someone who's closable and, and some people aren't closable because they're just not a good fit or they're just stubborn. Other people, ethically, you shouldn't close them because there's no benefit to you, no benefit to them. It's just not a good idea. He was one of those people. And a big red flag is he asked me, well, what guarantee do you have? And at the time, I didn't really know how to answer it. I was like, oh, I guarantee you, I'm going to bring you some really good results. You know, <laughs> you know I, didn't, I didn't know what to say. And uh, he's like, oh, okay. And like, now I know that's a big red flag that, you know, they're expecting something really big when they shouldn't, because this is all a process. And closed that. Same situation, I was training his front desk staff. The front desk staff did not like me. Some people showed up, so I finally figured out the gap of getting people in, but I realized I still had a lot to learn. And um, pretty much we worked together for two months, and I was happy that we stopped working together, even though it was like a, even though it was like a, a big client. It was just so much work. He was pounding me all the time, it, it sucked. Um, from there, do you want me to keep going? Oh, please, yeah. Like, okay, cool. Good. Okay, cool. Um, from there, I had another mentor that I invested a lot of money into. And this, the main, main reason I invested in them was because I needed to figure out the problem of converting these leads. I was, this was still a big problem of mine. And um, I invested in them. They helped me with some of their systems. And I tweaked them a little bit and created my own stuff. And um, I was still trying to figure out that problem. But now where I'm kind of at, I've realized from looking back on all this, even talking about it now, the problems were in a few different things. And Muke, you helped me with actually some of this as well when we started talking. Um, one of them is that the leads don't really matter. That what, what, there's a few things that matter before the follow-up. Is That's the offer and the message angle. That was extremely, extremely important. And you definitely helped with this because I remember when we started talking, we started crafting different message angles and, and figuring out that, okay, we got to cater to these people's needs and to their wants and emotionally and logically. So you helped with that a lot, but that was one big thing. Um, the message angle. Second, the follow-up process. It has to be extremely like on point, And I'm still working on that to this day. I've brought a lot of the clients now that I've worked with, I bring an ROI to every single month. Like they are, my services pay for themselves and it's, it's working extremely well. If I left it how it was, it would do great, but I want it to do better. So, you know, the main thing that I learned is they need to be, you know, they need to be texted immediately. They need to be called immediately. Everything must be tracked, like from every level, everything has to be tracked so we can iterate and improve and tweak little things. Um, and now I'm working on kind of like warming up the leads and preparing them for the sale and just giving the client ideally a slam dunk on the sale. Um, a few other things that I've learned in hindsight also is that a lot of it is just sales skills. Like I got to teach, sure. I got to teach them a follow-up process, but a simple follow-up process with a generic script and a generic call them as soon as possible isn't going to work because you need to have a legitimate sales process that you can encounter objections, handle objections and all that good stuff and just actually sell someone. So I'd say I'll, I'll stop my head from what I'm thinking right now. Those are the main things that I've learned is that it's a lot more than just the lead. Oh, and, and finally, you helped me with this a lot too. Looking at the bigger picture, I, I, look at, I look too granular sometimes and I've gotten a lot better with this, but looking at the bigger picture with, okay, you know, leads don't really matter. Following up, it matters. Like all of them matter a little bit, but the end goal is profit and ROI. That's the only thing that matters. No one is going to, 
work with you and continue to work with you or refer you unless you're bringing them profit. Some people will, it depends on what they want, but if I want to be a really good business owner and I want to provide the best value and the amount of value as I can, profit's king. Like it doesn't matter how many likes you want on your post or how many followers or you want, it, it doesn't matter. Profit's what matters at the end of the day. Cause if you don't have profit in your business, your business is going to die. So I'd say those are the main things that I've learned. Yeah. And there's like, Oh, there's so many like key factors. Like there's so many good, good points you made in that. But what I really like is how you're talking about how like with the whole lead generation, how you're able to really look at the whole, we're able to really examine the big picture of everything. Uh, like, I think when we start, especially as consultants or SMA, like we have like this idea of like how things are going to go in our head like for a client. We're like, we're going to like set up, we're going to set up this like campaign, and like this this how many leads are going to come in, and like that stuff like usually never happens, but something else does, and then from there we're able to like re certain goal we're trying to like the certain goals we set from beforehand and it's really interesting like beforehand like before like working with you if like i set a goal and like i did something and it didn't like happen i've been like okay i must be like trash you know but now it's like you know it's a process like it like we're just we're inching towards the goal like and the less that we do and the more that we're able to like communicate effectively with our clients the better it's going to be so that's really cool. Uh, the next question I have, I believe it's the fourth question. Um, this kind of is going back. So you did kind of already edit, like you did kind of already answer this question, but this is kind of more tactics. So what did you do when like you had like no experience like at all? At, like, um, implement, like implementing things you like you've never done before that you said you do. Like what did you do when you had no experience? So. Like I said, I, I've really never bought a single course in my life. I've pretty much only bought like one course and a lot of people watching this and you and I both know courses like, like a lot of people have had an experience with a course or some kind of a mentor. And so those are my two experiences and I mainly have more experience with mentors and just like you and me just having like a mutual relationship. Like we're friends, like we're just helping each other out just and, and all that good stuff. So like I've got two mentors and one course and I got cost a lot of money then a whole bunch of like little courses and books but with all of that the number one thing that I've learned from is my own experience like actually doing it myself and even though I had a mentor even though I had a courses and books and a ton of resources like everyone has infinite resources from the internet even if you don't have to pay for it like a course or anything you have infinite resources yeah. and like the YouTube university is a real thing. No, it is. You're totally right. Like that's where I learned a lot of my stuff. And like, I, I had no experience, but like I, I started to realize, and I, I think I realized this from like, I don't know where it came from, but like from the school I went to, I went to an all boys school and I, I played sports and like, I wasn't the best on the sports team or anything, but like just from like community of the school, I think I started to realize that like, and especially like, especially with you, um, you, you showed me this really well is that like, you don't know anything until you do it. Like no matter how many books you read about it or whatever, you're, you're not going to know what's going to happen until you do it. And like, I, I've seen this with some of like my mentees. Um, like one of them called me the other day, like, oh, the sales call went completely. I, I didn't, it was going to go a completely different way. I was like, and I laughed. I was like, obviously it's never going to go how you think. But when I had like zero experience, I'd say what I did is I just like tried it. Like I just, I didn't care what happened. I was just like, you know what, whatever happens, happens. I'm going to put my all at it and I'm just going to try something like whatever it is. I'm just going to try it. I'm going to test it. Okay. And back then I didn't do this well, but even now, if it's some new territory that I'm going into, hell, I'll just try it, test it, track it. And did it work? Yes. Cool. How can I make it better? Or let me do it again. Make sure it really works. Or does it not work? Okay, cool. It doesn't work. Well, where did it go wrong? Let me test something else. Let me add a different variable and like i said you've helped with this tremendously because i used to not think about it this way but now i do but when i had no experience i guess i kind of did the same thing but i just didn't realize it um maybe i went more of like a shotgun approach and i would just like i i used to walk into like business owners like 
five, six different business owners every single day. Like I'd wake up, do whatever I got to do. Then I'd drive around for like an hour or two, walk into businesses and try set up meetings. And sometimes they'd work, sometimes they didn't, but I just kept doing it. And as I kind of evolved it and did like outreach through Instagram and Facebook, like whether I got zero responses for two weeks or for two months or for two days, I would just like keep doing it. And I wouldn't really care what, what happened. So. Yeah. Learning by doing. Yeah. Like totally. Um, all right. We're going to the next question. Yeah. One more after this. Um, what mindset, what mindset shift, my bad, really helped you with just like getting better with your service? I would say focusing on the big picture. Like, I way too often I would I would focus on like way too more of like the granular tasks and you know just just not focus on the big picture and on top of that the big the big one I'd say was what I kind of just said too is like you just got to have like if you want to do anything in business or even in life like you got to have like really really good uh, you got to have really strong willpower and really strong discipline like if you don't get you just got to real. you just got to try and like you just got to like not care in a sense you just got to keep going keep pounding away but at the same time like in the beginning i was going and pounding away and doing it and doing it doing it doing it taking action taking action but where when i started talking to you and like you and me have similar mindsets but you went in a little different ways in a sense i started i started i was kept on pounding away and i didn't stop taking action but i took you know, time, whether it was a day, a few hours or a week to track, make sure I tracked everything that I did and make sure I saw, okay, well, this wasn't working where I wanted to. Okay. Let me take this out. Let me put something in, or let me, you know, let me reiterate this. Let me, the best way I can describe it is just a scientific method. Like I'd say that that's something really valuable. And you, you said this too. I remember we were talking a while ago, like number one thing you learned in school, like in retrospect was the scientific method. Like that's one of the most applicable things you can use today. I totally agree with that. Like, I, I think it's one of the best things like that you can, you can use no matter what you're doing. Even if you're doing a nine to five job and your boss gives you some paperwork that you got to do or some, whatever it is, you could probably use a scientific method to get it done faster, more efficiently and get more results. So I said, that's the biggest, that's one of the biggest ones. The other one is just looking at the big picture um, and just having a clear vision and just taking it like day by day in a sense, but at the same time, having a big picture and just, same time having fun with it people take take it too seriously too i feel like like people take this stuff way too seriously and yeah you got to take it seriously in a sense but like if you're like not like i some when days i enjoy I've, it yeah when you like when you enjoy doing it yeah i, mean, I totally agree like when you enjoy doing it like i guess when you're talking about how you got like that payment when you're leaving oh like, yeah like, when like some like moments like that like I mean, I mean, that's in my opinion. Like, you just enjoy stuff like that. So yeah, it's fun. Like, like last point on that too. Like when it was just this last week. I've this this past week. I've had to start delegating a crap ton of tasks, and it started to ramp up big time. And like, it's crazy, but at the same time, awesome. And like, I'm getting really excited for it. So, totally, yeah. Some days I won't. Like I was saying, some days I won't even work, and I'll just you know chill out. So some people take it too seriously. So. Definitely. Oh, all right. Here's the last question. Uh, it's a random one. What are your thoughts on college? What are my thoughts on college? Um, yeah. So I'm going to college right now. I'm actually about to start my second year to kind of pre-frame everyone. Um, my opinion is that not a lot of the not a lot of stuff you're going to learn in college is necessarily applicable, but depending on your circumstances, on your situation, on what's right for you is and, and who you are and all that stuff, it, I think it could help, but I think it needs to change. Like my opinion, like when they, like when I go and I, I got to, I'll talk to my counselor or whoever about this. If they're giving me like, for example, algebra two or, or, or applied calculus two, right? It's like, all right, for what I want to do, I don't need any of this. Like, the only math I need to know is addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and maybe just some, I mean, that's, that's it. Like, I don't need to know anything else. It's, there's no benefit to me, right? 
And, you know, in the situation that mine, I'm not going to go too deep into it because it's a little personal, but if anyone wants to know, they can reach out to me. I, I kind of have a, like, I kind of have it in a sense, I have it good in a sense. Like I pretty much, I don't have to pay for my college. I'll be really honest with a lot of people. I don't, I don't have to pay for my own college, which I'm really blessed to not have to. So, you know, I'm kind of, I'm trying, honesty. sorry. So respect the honesty. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't have to. And so, you know, but it doesn't mean I'm not taking it seriously, but it doesn't mean I'm not, not taking it seriously either. Like I think it can benefit people, but it depends what you want to do with your life. And at the same time, you got to realize that like, if you want to achieve something really, really great in life, you're not going to achieve that through college. There's not something you're going to learn in college is going to make you achieve it. So like my, my mindset with it is, okay, I'm going to try to take advantage of what I'm doing here and what maybe some of the stuff I'm learning. So for example, I've put flyers up around campus before hiring sales reps that I pay on commission if that, and I make it very clear. I say, you will not get paid for this. Or if you do, it'll be commission based. Like if you just want to learn sales, like let's go. And like, that's helped a lot. I've hired like cold calling teams and messaging outreach teams and I've gotten like mentees from there too. I've posted, Hey, if you're interested in starting a business, like reach out to me and then I'll have people reach out to me. Heck, I, I make some money off of it. So I might as well while I'm there. Um, I've worked with different professors that own bigger businesses. Like I worked with a nonprofit for a while um, at college and just from networking. So I'm trying to take advantage of my situation while I'm being there, you know, by networking with people. Um, that there's another one thing. Another thing that my mentors taught me too, is that, they went to college too, and you can definitely build some very profound connections at college. Because I know I did in high school, so you definitely can at college. But at the same time, like I said, it's not for everyone. It really depends on your situation. If it's logically smart for you to actually do it, and if it, if, if what you're going there is is worth it. I mean, if you and you know if your parents are holding something over your head, I mean, at the same time, it's your own life, and you should make a, a, a solid decision for yourself. But you know, even if you go to like a small community college or whatever, something that just it doesn't matter. You can, and if it's, if you're worried about making a living, it's do research and look at for yourself. People that go to college, they don't make the best money right out of college, you know, and they don't, it's not a guaranteed job if you have a degree by no means. So I don't know, I get, I don't know if that answered the, the whole question, but that's my well, take totally. on it. I mean, I agree. Like, just like networking, especially yeah. when you have skills and you have an offer and there's a group of people that you can help. Yeah. I think networking is a, is a big thing. Like, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. That's probably the biggest thing I would take to college is, Oh, I was, I was able to network with a whole bunch of people and just grow my connection base and have an impact on people. Well, all right. Before we end this, like you mentioned your mentees, like tell us about your mentorship program and like, I'll link it out here as well, but tell us about that and how can people find you and reach out to you? Okay, cool. Yeah. So my mentorship program is, it's kind of a combination of a course aspect and one-on-one. -on -one. And um, it's, it's really different to a lot of other programs from, in my opinion, and from what everyone has, else has been saying. Pretty much, um, you get the course aspect, but the main part of it is you get weekly one-on-one -on -one calls with me where we'll talk just like this and whatever you're doing in your business, I'll help you. I'll guide you and do whatever I got to do to help. Um, Muke will link it and you know he's Muke has helped a lot with all this too you know like like I said I've been very sporadic thinking and thinking of you know a million different things when in reality like I'll just talk to him and then like with my mentorship program I've been really really confused before of how many should I have of this or how should this work and it's just like stupid stuff and he'll just say like one thing and just simplify that that's what he's really good with he's very good at boiling it down to the fundamental beliefs and the fundamental traits of just how it should work and then it just, that's the number one thing I've learned from not just you, but in general, just keep everything in your life as simple as possible. You know, like I used to have a shitload of credit cards and um, debit cards. Now I just got one personal uh, credit, one personal debit card, one, per, uh, one business debit, one business credit, but it's really great. But my, like I said, my mentorship, Muke will link it below. It's, it's very one-on-one -on -one based where every week we'll get one, two, three, four calls together, however many you want to schedule. There's a group of 15, 16, 17 people that are in it. Um, they've all achieved great success, and you can check out the interviews with them as well. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and I, like his like I've seen it like personally firsthand like his mentorship is like it's very strong powerful like if you are just looking to like get the ball rolling start reaching out if you already know people and like you just want to start like closing deals like Nick is the man for the job. like he'll teach you how to get that going like, get that rolling so thank you. Nick I want to say thank you for um, taking the time to do this I'm looking forward to speaking again when uh, we do things on your side and if there's anything you have anything else you want to say before we go I mean uh, just thanks for having me thanks for talking to me thanks for everything you've helped out with and definitely check out Muke guys if you if you haven't talked to him before he'll definitely shed some light on some confusing topics you got but other than that, that that's all thanks brother all right guys so we're gonna end it here and hope you all have a good night cool see you guys